Well, Julian, I know it might be uh, difficult to put into words maybe at this moment, but what, what is the emotion like for you right now? <clears throat> I'm very, very happy. <laughs> very happy. I know you've never been short on confidence, right? But I mean, today, you know, getting ready, walking to the cage, I mean, what was the feeling like? Was, I mean, was it still supreme confidence or were there little moments of doubt like, oh man, all this thing that I've been working for, it's finally here. You know, uh, I've been in this camp for so long and uh, it's been a tough road to get here. I've been calling for this fight since, since UFC 200. So for it to finally be here, that's over five years in the making. I'm just glad that, you know, it's over and done with, uh, number one. Number two, I was cool. I was calm. I was collected. I, I was cool as a cucumber, and, and I definitely think that that made for a easy second fight camp, easy fight week, and an easy walkout. Yeah. Obviously, round one probably didn't go exactly as you drew it up, so I'm just curious kind of what's going through your head as round one's playing out, and I guess what the discussion was on the stool in between rounds. I mean, I wasn't deterred by any means in round one. I don't know if you've seen some of my past fights. Sometimes it takes me a little bit to get, you know, shooken up and woken up a little bit in order for me to get going and to make those adjustments going into round two. I feel like round two, round three, I'm just warming up. Um, so for me, that was, I, I was not deterred by, by any means. Um, I, in fact, I had her in an arm lock, I think, for a, a good portion of that first round. And, and um, the adjustments from my coach was just like, Keep being you. You're doing great. Just keep going out there and just do exactly what you just did. So it was great. So round two, you start having success, but you take the damage to your eye, obviously. That's kind of causing issues. But at some point, it looked like you just said, we're throwing down, right? Which I don't think any of us thought was the way you were going to win this fight, right? So what's going through your head? You said, yeah, you know what? I'll just stand and we'll just, we'll just start throwing bombs at each other. Yeah, I mean, everybody uh, thinks that I am just only versed on the ground or that I'm just a ground person, but in mixed martial arts, you have to be versed everywhere. And I'm confident on the feet, I'm confident in the clinch, and I'm confident on the ground. Wherever the fight goes, I'm comfortable. It's not that I have one specific specialty. I, I like to go wherever the fight takes me, and I just kind of let the fight take place however it does naturally. Nice, and you got to the back. Did you know the choke was there? I mean, was it difficult to work in, or did you know, like, oh, th I've got it right now? Um, I saw her leaking from her nose a little bit, and I, I put the choke on, but I wasn't sure. I didn't realize that she tapped. I remember when I took her down, I thought, man, I wish somebody could tell me how much time I have left in the round um, because I didn't know how much time was left. And then after that, the ref picked me up, and they threw me in the corner, and I think it was either the commissioner or the ref, and I said, what happened? He said, it's over. You're done. It's congratulations. I was like, oh, gee, I didn't even know. <laughs> so is that when the moment the elation sets in, I guess? That's, that's only when you know? Yeah, that, I mean, it, you know, Amanda's been such a great champion, and uh, she's done a ton for the sport. So for me to be able to take out, you know, arguably the greatest of all time um, was something and is something that is still sinking in right now. Nice. Last thing I'll ask, I mean, I, I think you said going in, like a, a rematch, you know, Dana was here and said if she wants the rematch, but we've got to see what she wants. I mean, do you believe a rematch should be next? Do you want it to be next? And, and if so, uh, I mean, how soon do you want to fight? How, how much time do you want to take to enjoy this? I mean, we could do it next week. Um, I'm free next month. Uh, you know, two months from now, whenever whenever they want to do it, I'm ready. No, I, I, in all fairness, um, you know, I've been in camp for a year. I really think that my daughter deserves some some well uh, deserved mommy time, a little vacation. Um, after that, definitely, if she wants to do a rematch, we can do a rematch. Um, and, uh, you know, I've always been a company girl. I've always been what, whatever they usually, you know, point me in the direction and I'll go there. You point, I shoot. So whatever they want to do, we'll talk about that later. I just want to enjoy the moment right now. Juliana, congratulations. Um, I saw you dancing when Amanda's walk on music was playing. You were dancing. Uh, you were that relaxed that you could dance before the fight. Do you normally do that kind of thing? I, I love music. Music is a thousand percent in my blood. It's it's something that I, I love and I enjoy quite a bit. So to know, actually, I was expecting her to walk out to a song that I asked Heidi Dean to play for me one time. And she was like, we can't play that song. That's a champ song. I said, no, that's my song. So when she when tonight, I was expecting her to walk out to my song and I was going to be singing that song the whole time. But it ended up being a different song. And I was like, oh, well, this is a great beat to shake it to. And so that's what I did. And, and yeah, I was definitely cool. Calm and collected. I heard the commentator say she looks nervous. I was like, what are you talking about? I was dancing. Yeah, no, I saw that. Um, you know, the, the question, like I said to Dana even before the fight, I was asking him about your confidence, and I said, 
if she said, hey, Amanda has this weakness or that weakness as a fighter, you could see it. But like you're saying, she's ducking you. And she had fought the cyborg and all the, everybody else, all the best of the best of the best. So can you explain like what you saw that made you think she was ducking you given all of the terrific fighters she fought? Sure. I would love to tell you guys the story. <clears throat> At UFC 200, when the T-Mobile Arena very first opened up, me and Kat were the first girls on the card, and I beat Kat. When Amanda fought Misha, I sat cage side and I said, I want that fight. When she became champion, she came here and sat before you guys and you guys asked her, who's next? And she said, I think Juliana Pena. And I'm like, that's great. That's my fight. I want that fight. I called for it at the cage. So I'm expecting to fight Amanda. Well, Ronda Rousey just got knocked out by Holly Holm and she got to cut the line. And instead of Amanda fighting me, she took a fight with Ronda. And I'm like, that's not fair. But, you know, it's MMA. So she took the fight with Rhonda. Somewhere along the line, I got pregnant. I came back from pregnancy. I beat former world champion Nico Montano, and I called for that fight and, uh, against a champ. And it, it didn't end up happening. Then I fought Jermaine Durandiman, and her camp was over there in Abu Dhabi saying, she is watching very closely. She does not want to fight you. This is the rumor that I'm hearing. And it's from her camp. And so I'm like, I know she doesn't want to fight me. So when I lost to Jermaine Durandiman, she tweeted out, you, can't even, you haven't even made yourself worthy for me, da 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 And I'm like, man, I had that fight. It was a bad night for me. I turned around, I stayed active, and I got that win against Sarah McMahon. Now, in between beating Sarah McMahon and taking this fight with Amanda, I was offered the ultimate fighter to coach alongside Amanda Nunes. And I said, yes, absolutely, I will do that. Well, they, we got to wait for Amanda. We're, we're waiting for her to do all this. Uh, we're, she has a farm. She's going to go back to Brazil to tend to her farm. And uh, we don't know if she's going to do it yet. <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, she's not going to Brazil. I can see her wife is having a fight against Amanda or Mackenzie Dern. She is not in Brazil. She's, it's not like she's going to go take her baby by herself to Brazil. And so then she said, no, I'm not going to do the ultimate fighter. And I'm like, of course you're not. So... Later on, we have the fight scheduled for August, and she pulled out. Now, back in, I think, May, she said she had COVID, and it was reported Amanda Nunes has COVID. So now, come in August, she has COVID again, and I'm just like, okay, I'm not trying to downplay the COVID thing, but it was just weird timing. Um, so, And not only that, once again, I hear uh, from a rumor uh, from a from somebody in their camp, they say, she hasn't even been training. She hasn't even showed up at the gym this entire time. So I remember I ran into Dan Lambert over in Houston, and I said, I know that she hasn't been training. One of somebody in your team says she hasn't even been training. He said, no, she has been training. I, 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 she's been training. Uh, and so that next Sunday, that was a Saturday, Sunday morning, I see Amanda posting that she's in the gym, and now she's training for the fight. And now we're here in December, and, and she made it. And, and honestly... You know, no disrespect, but the whole time I'm thinking something is going to happen and she's not going to make it. Something's going to happen. She's going to, you know, because she pulled out with Valentina, I think the night of the fight, and she pulled out with me the week of the fight. So I was like, yes, I'm going to show up in December, but if Amanda does show up or not, that's going to be the question. And that's the only thing that I was, you know, worried about. Let me uh, just ask you one final question. It may be a little bit crazy, but she has two belts, right? So now if there is a rematch, you're a big girl, uh, and you know, Kayla Harrison is also around. There would be a big money fight if you beat Amanda at 45. Would you consider, an, under any circumstances, fighting her the second time at 45 so that maybe you would be a, a champ champ? I think that there's some rematches that I want to do. Uh, I would like to go down and rematch uh, Valentina Shevchenko. I would love to get that rematch against Jermaine Durandiman. I would love a, a rematch if that's what she wants against Amanda Nunes. Um, those are the rematches that I have in my uh, peripheral. Um, and with that being said, you know, right now I just kind of want to soak it all in and enjoy this moment of, of becoming the champion tonight. Thank you. Juliana, right here. Hi. Congratulations, champ. Thanks, Sean. It's a, just looking back from the beginning to this, I mean, 2014, you blow out every ligament basically in your knee and then you have the break in 2018 and just this whole journey, all the ups and downs. Can you put into words really what this means at this point to have shown so many people, proved, proved all the doubters wrongs and just really get to this moment? I'm I mean, for me, I got nothing to prove, you know? I got nothing to prove. Everybody was sleeping on me, and I, I, I uh, shook up the world, and, and I did what I said that I was going to do. But at the end of the day, I'm not surprised. You know, I know that I have a 
big, huge will and determination. And, and I've been saying it all week long. The world is your oyster. You can literally do anything that you want in this life. You have the ability to do anything that you want in this life. I've been through the wash. I have literally been through the wash. I have done it all. I'm talking torn everything that you can possibly think of. Ran over by cars, hit by dudes in the alleys. You know, I've, I've done it all. Nothing was going to stop me from getting this belt. This has been 13 years grinding. And uh, it's finally come to fruition. And it, it's my time. Did you feel like she underestimated you, that you, she, she was taking you lightly this whole week? I mean, she's said many times that I couldn't make myself worthy as a champion for her, you know? Um, when I was trying to answer my question at the press conference and she cut me off and she was talking about, you know, my best friend and look what I did to her. And, you know, she was just saying all sorts of stuff. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised I was ready for everything and I just really want to... Uh, thank my team and my family and um, I wouldn't be here without them. Last one from me. I mean, the kind of the full circle nature of this, obviously Misha was your mentor in the beginning. Amanda took the belt from me. Misha, kept it this whole entire time and now you take it from Amanda. That whole, just that circle of that. I mean, what, what does that seem like to you? It just seems like it was my time. There were so many signs leading up to this moment. There were so many times in my life uh, not only signs, but dreams. Dreams of myself and dreams of others. And uh, I'm, I'm really uh, weirdly into that kind of stuff, a spiritual thing. I, I, I have a very strong faith in God, and that is something that kept me strong mentally, physically, and emotionally to get to this point, especially having to go through another fight camp. And uh, I just really think that, you know, it's a surreal moment, but it's absolutely my time, and, and I knew I'm not surprised. I'm, not, I'm really not. Congrats. Juliana, Thank you. in the middle, over here. Uh, Dana was telling us the story about what happened with uh, Michael Chiesa. Just curious if you saw him uh, come try to celebrate with you. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Mike and me started within one week of each other in the gym. And uh, we have been grinding with Rick uh, in Spokane, Washington, since we were babes. Literally, I was 19 years old. I started within one week of Mike Chiesa. And uh, we've been grinding for 13 years together. So this is a big moment for me. It's also a big moment for Mike. And I know he was very emotional. I can't speak on anything else that happened. I'm not sure. You know, I was uber focused on what I needed to do, but I love Michael. He knows I love him. I know he loves me. And, and this win is uh, just as big for him as it is for me. And you mentioned your love for music. Uh, I'm curious what inspired the choice of Psycho by Puddle of Mud. So I think I've talked to you guys about this a few times. Uh, and and I, I hate to bring it up. I used to be superstitious. I'm not superstitious anymore. But one time I walked out to the same song twice and I, and I lost the second time. So I was like, I can't walk out to the same song twice. So I used to have Dana pick my songs, but then I knew that it was like such a, like a, a task, you know? So then I just started letting Heidi pick my songs. I said, I don't want to know what the song is. I, I absolutely don't want to know anything. Just whatever you choose is what you choose. So literally I've pretty much walked out to a different song every single time. It's been completely random at the hands of the UFC. All right, congrats, champ. Thank you. Champ here in the back. Hi. Uh, so when you were in that intense firefight in the second round and, you know, the tie's going back and forth, you're, you're connecting against her, she's connecting against you, can you in any way verbalize what's going through your mind in such an intense situation? Um, no, I, it's just you're on the horse. Don't, don't get pucked off the horse. You know, we could do this all day. I was, I was comfortable. I was ready. I could see the change in her face. And uh, then I could see my corners. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, we're doing this. So um, I, I, I was uh, very comfortable. And previously when we were talking to Dana White, he retold the story about when he first met you, when he went up to him and said, I'm going to be fighting for you and I'm going to become a world champion. Could you sort of retell a little bit of that from your perspective and how sort of reality matched what you were thinking back then as a young fighter? Yeah, so it was about 2013. Dana had uh, recently allowed women to fight inside the UFC and that they were going to have their very first Ultimate Fighter house. So I came down early to help actually Misha get ready to train uh, for Kazangano. And uh, they were the tryouts for the Ultimate Fighter. And I caught, again, heard rumor that he was going to be at Syndicate Gym. So I took a taxi, I went to Syndicate, and I saw him in the corner, and I walked right up to him. And I said, my name is Juliana Pena, and I'm going to win the Ultimate Fighter. And he was like, uh, all right. Uh, and so, yeah, when I won the Ultimate Fighter, that was great. That's how the first encounter that I ever had with Dana. And, uh, you know, I've been telling him, too. I, I literally tell him all the time, I want that fight. I want that fight. Give me that fight. And I think maybe 
subconsciously he was just trying to protect me like no you don't want that fight you know he's trying to be like trust me you don't want that fight but I've been gunning for it this entire time and he finally gave me the opportunity the opportunity that I've been asking for and uh, I'm just in internally grateful for him giving me that chance he, he gave me my shot and I'm, I'm so happy for that and last one for me then obviously you're a Venezuelan vixen have you gotten any chance to sort of have, have you heard any word from like your fans in Venezuela and what this means to them uh, no, I haven't. I haven't even picked up my phone. I, I pretty much put my phone in dead zone for like the last week, so I, I don't even know where my phone's at. But I can tell you that, you know, my dad is here. He's from Venezuela. He's from Machiques. I got family in Maracaibo. I got family in Caracas and the Isla de Mar Merida. Um, and, you know, I'm also Mexican. My mom is uh, from New Mexico. She's also Native American. So I'm a mixture of all sorts of uh, warrior blood. And I know that my Venezuelan family is extremely proud and happy for me. Venezuela has been going through a tumultuous time uh, in their government. And if I can give any sort of hope or inspiration, motivation to any of those to stay strong, um, that's what I would like to do. And if I could be that representative for them, then, you know, that's an honor. And I wear that very uh, pridefully and humbly. I'm sure you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Juliana, just one more for you right here. Um, you mentioned the Ultimate Fighter a few times today. You're one of the elite, uh, elite members of the group now who've won a UFC belt and that show. Uh, would you be interested if you guys do do a rematch to now coach that in this scenario ahead of a potential second fight with Amanda, coach the reality show? Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, I would love to coach the Ultimate Fighter. It's always been a dream of mine. And uh, yeah, I would love for her to coach alongside me. Uh, I got nothing but love and respect for Amanda. I think that she's been a great champion. And um, coaching the Ultimate Fighter would be another dream come true for me. And actually, just one more. Uh, when you hopped on the cage after winning the bell, you kind of had like a primal moment there where you're screaming out. What was going through your head and you know, your body at that moment? Well, I've been doing this for 13 years, and I've never jumped on the cage before, ever. I've never even got on the cage before. So they were like, get on the cage. It's like, oh, OK, this is my time to get on the cage. And when I got up there, I was like, oh, this is kind of scary. Um, but I was just happy. And you know, I, in that moment is when it hit me that you, know, you did it. So I was just elated, literally elated. One of the greatest uh, moments of my life. Just went over here. Uh, this is the first time in UFC history that two moms actually fought for a championship. Do you feel like the promotion needs to create a new be belt for you, the baddest mom on the planet? That is such a great point. The UFC absolutely needs to create a new belt for me. It needs to be the baddest mom on the planet. Um, and you know, I'm not ta trying to take away anything from Amanda. She's a wonderful mother, but I gave birth to my daughter. And I know that, you know, I feel like for giving birth, I am the first mom champ. And that to me is also a little feather in the cap. Juliana, one in the back. Wanted to ask what it means to you to be taking this belt back to Chicago to be the first world champion under your coaches there. Man, uh, that's amazing. And I said it a long time ago. I'm taking this belt back to the lake. And I want to dedicate this to all of my team and all of my training partners. Um, I literally have the best team in the world. And to bring it back to the lake and to bring it back to Chi-Town is, is, is such a pride, pride for me. It's, it's an honor. And I'm so excited. Uh, I also can't wait to take it back to 509, where my roots are from. 509, loyal to the soil. Washington State is where I'm from. And I'll be back there soon as well. Thank you. Thank you. Juliana down here. Obviously, Amanda held belts in two different weight classes. Do you, would, you, would you like to have a rematch of uh, um, featherweight, or would you like the rematch of bantamweight? Do you have a preference, or? Um, we can rematch at, at 135 pounds if she wants to do that. But at, I mean, whatever, whatever the company decides, it would be great to obviously be a, a two-division uh, champion. Even to go down to 125 and face Valentina down there would be great, too. Uh, right now, though, I just want to soak in the moment of becoming uh, the champion tonight and just relish in that for a little while. But you're saying uh, that you'll do whatever the company want to do, but now you've got some pulling power. You're, you're, you're a champ. You can flex those champ muscles. Why don't you do that? I'm sorry. Uh, I can't hear you. And uh, can you ask your question again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was saying that you've got some pulling power now that you're a champion. You're saying that you'll do whatever the company wants to do. So why don't you just do what Juliana Penny wants to do? That's true. Uh, that's very true. Uh, thank you for that. The UFC, I'll do what I want to do. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I, I'm willing to work. You know, I'm easy to work with. You know, whatever makes sense. If it don't make money, it don't make sense. And, you know, if it's something that is, you know, good to me and, and great for me, then of course I'm going to do it. John, just one more quick one for you. Um, yes, sir. 
when Michael Bisping beat Luke Rockhold, everyone talked about this was this huge upset, and he was like offended by it, being like, I knew I was going to win this fight. It's not an upset in my mind. When people are talking about this now being like one of the biggest upsets in UFC history, does that warm your heart, or does that feel like an insulting thing to you because they're maybe downgrading your skills to a degree? I definitely think that people have been sleeping on me, and they have not been putting any respect on my name. They haven't been... Um, giving me as much credit as I feel like I deserve. You know, whenever the commentators talk about, you know, Amanda Nunes, they'll say everybody else's name but mine. Uh, and, I mean, they can't even spell my name right. They don't ever put the Atilda over the N, you know? So those, there's little things where I'm like, man, that's, can I get some respect? Um, but with that being said, I wasn't surprised. My coach's eye, Rick Little, is very good. And he told me a long time ago in 2013, not 2013, when I beat Kat Zingano at UFC 200, you can beat her. And then I sat cage side when she fought Jermaine Duranyman, and I was like, yo, coach, I can beat her. And so for me, I'm not surprised for everybody else that was sleeping, wake up, and uh, I'm here.